community input needed on two Tacoma landmarks. One of the lowest tides of the year hits Tacoma and clean sweeps comes to Tacoma streets. These stories and more coming up next on Tacoma Report. Hi, I'm Angie Foster. Laura Proctor is off today and will return on the next show. Just a few more weeks until we celebrate Independence Day. This means barbecues, family picnics, and a lot of red, white, and blue. The City of Tacoma has a year-round fireworks ban in effect. This means personal fireworks use is prohibited with violations resulting in a $513 fine. We still respond to numerous fires on the 4th of July. On an average day, we respond on over 100 calls in a day, and on the 4th of July, we could go up upwards of over 200 calls. So it almost doubles our number of responses. Um, we put extra rigs in service just for that holiday. The ban has been in effect since 1992. Violations of the fireworks ban can be reported by calling South Sound 911's non-emergency number at 253-287. 4455. In the meantime, skip the fine and enjoy the 4th of July summer blast along Ruston Way. The City Street Sweeping Program is essential to keep stormwater clean by removing dirt and debris that accumulates on city streets. To raise awareness, Environmental Services has wrapped a street sweeper with the slogan, if it hits the ground, it hits the sound, as a reminder that most stormwater flows from streets, sidewalks, and neighborhoods untreated into the Puget Sound. Residents can help by being patient when driving behind a sweeper, removing vehicles and trash bins from the street on sweep days, and trimming branches 14 feet above the roadway. This ensures effective sweeping and helps local waterways. Visit the city's website to find out when the street sweeper will be in your neighborhood. The city of Tacoma launched its biennial in-depth community survey. More than 750 households are participating. Every two years, the city conducts a scientific survey of randomly selected households from each of the city's council districts to hear directly from community members on their priority issues, gauge their level of satisfaction with city services, and gather information to track certain topics and trends over time. Survey respondents can submit it online over the phone or by mail. Those who complete the survey will be entered into a drawing to win a $500 gift certificate. The season of street fairs and summer fun is up and running with the new Proctor Blocks Summer Event Series. Proctor Blocks event is transforming specific non-arterial streets into vibrant pedestrian friendly spaces for activities and family friendly fun by temporarily closing them to cars between June and September. The sizzling summer fun begins with an expanded La Paloma Street Market, just the first of seven market days coming this summer to North 28th Street off Proctor Street. Proctor Blocks events also include Family Fun Day in July, Proctor Food Fest in August, and the historic Cushman Street Fair in September. Coming up, we'll have Deputy Mayor Hines in our studio to talk about the Cushman and Adams substations in Proctor. We'll see you after the break. When you drive along North 21st Street in North Proctor, you may notice a couple of interesting old buildings, the Adams and Cushman substations. These structures have some history in the neighborhood with many ideas on their future uses. With me today is Deputy Mayor John Hines to help us understand how the community may weigh in on a series focusing on the Tacoma Cushman Adams Future Use Study. Thanks for being here today. Happy to be here. So for those that may not be aware, can you share a little bit of background of the Cushman and Adams uh, substation properties and what is changing? Yeah, so if, like you said, as you drive down North 21st Street, you've probably seen these large concrete structures off to the side, and that's the Cushman and Adams substations. They were built mm -hmm. in the 1920s, and they're, they brought power in from the Cushman sub dams out on the Olympic Peninsula wow. right into North Tacoma. Uh, We've changed a lot of our technology around substations, and so they were no longer needed after 2018. Uh, so now that they're no longer needed for delivery of power by Tacoma Public Utilities, uh, their properties are looking to be surplused here in the near future. 
Um, they were placed in the historical register, so they're historic buildings. Oh. And so that adds another layer of opportunity because the buildings have to stay with the future of the property. And we're really just excited to see what the community mm -hmm. wants to see with awesome. those two properties. Awesome. So uh, what makes this unique? Well, I think the, the historic nature of the buildings, right? Absolutely. They've been there since 1924. They're very um, iconic. Yeah. You can, when you drive by, you're like, wow, what is that? I mean, I think a yeah. lot of people have asked those questions over the years. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're also a really large piece of property right in the middle of North Tacoma. They're right near the Proctor District. They're right there at University of Puget Sound. And so it's a real opportunity to kind of reimagine a large part of North Tacoma, you know, kind of a once in a lifetime opportunity. Not often do big pieces of property like yeah, this come absolutely. up. Absolutely. That's right. So are there timelines set and uh, where where is the progress? Yeah, that's a great question. So the properties were sur are, are going to be surplus by TPU. They stopped being active substations back in 2018. They're currently mm -hmm. used as storage sites. Um, and so we started an outreach process around the reuse of Cushman Adams substation back in 2018. Moving forward, as we all know, COVID happened in 2020. We were right about to go out to the public and start the process, and we pressed pause in 2020 on that. Um, one of the reasons yeah. why is I heard from a lot of members of the public that really wanted a public process, an open public process where they could come in and be part of it, which we really couldn't accomplish during COVID. And yeah. so the project was paused in 2020, and we're now restarting it here in 2024. Um, and. <clears throat> Really excited about getting more input from the public. Lots of people have been thinking about that property for many years and kind of what it can be become. And uh, we're, we're finally getting that process going. Yeah. So why is it important for you, uh, for the city, to gain that community input? And what happens to these properties after the utility services are fully retired? Yeah. No. In Again, I think I said earlier, it's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Yeah. These are large, historic buildings that are right in the middle of North Tacoma. We don't have any large, undeveloped, right. <laughs> unused pieces of property yeah. in that part of the city. And so it's this chance to really think about how we can utilize these historic buildings in a new way. They're not going to be used for power delivery anymore, yeah. so how can they better serve the community needs? And they're not just North Tacoma assets. They're not just assets for people that live right around it. They're a community-wide asset. They're something that everyone in the community, everyone in our city should be part of. And so one of the things I'm very excited about is, is broadening who's been engaged. There have been a lot of people who live really close to the, to the properties that have been very engaged, and I really am excited about all the work they've done to and kind aware. of get people mm -hmm. excited and aware of what's happening. Mm -hmm. But we really need to broaden that conversation because whatever it becomes, it's gonna be a place where people from across the city, across the region can go. So in saying that, uh, when will a decision be made? Uh, great question. Um, so we are going to be starting out with a our first kind of public outreach meeting is June 22nd at the Wheelock Library. There's two sessions. One is from 10:30 to noon. The other is from uh, 2 to 4:30, if I'm not mistaken. And public can come to either one of those sessions and really start sharing right. their thoughts for the future of the building. Yeah. Um, Currently, Tacoma Public Utilities is looking to be out of the building and have it surplus in 2027. So we have a lot of time okay. to really get get it right. There, you know, we're able to really take our time with that public outreach process, get a lot of feedback and thoughts about it, and really be deliberate about what the future of that site holds. So if if a customer wanted more information, do you have a website available? There is a website on the city's website around the Cushman Adams Substation Future Reuse Project. I'd also uh, would be remiss if I didn't mention that there's a, a social pinpoint app website that's available right now for people to start putting their comments in right now ahead of the public meeting. So if you're interested in sharing your thoughts about what the future of the Cushman Adams substation should be, uh, you do can go to our website for the future use of Cushman Adams substation and there's a link right there to awesome. share your ideas and thoughts. And I've heard lots of ideas um, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm very excited to see what the community comes up with. Me too. So thank you again. Up next, it's low tide for all. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back to Tacoma Report. Three and a half feet may not seem like much of a distance, but mid-June saw record low tides up and down the sound. Tacoma recorded roughly a three foot drop from sea level. Great news for checking out sea life and tide pools along the Commencement Bay shore. If you're into cool structures, low tides are also revealed some of the old time artifacts of Tacoma industry as well. Birds really took advantage of snacks left by the ebbing tides. 
If interested in future beachcombing, check out tide predictions on the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website. Tacoma's committees, boards, and commissions needs volunteers like you. Numerous volunteer positions will be open to new applicants in June and July, including positions on the Equity and Contracting Advisory Committee, the Tacoma Area Commission on Disabilities, the City's Transportation Commission, and more. For details about open positions and to start your application, visit cityoftacoma.org slash cbc. The City of Tacoma's Neighborhood and Community Services Department invites South Sound service agencies and organizations to apply for contract funding. This is for the 2025-2026 funding cycle. The online application portal is now open but will be closing at 11 a.m. on Tuesday, July 2nd. Up to $8 million from various funding sources is available. Find out if your organization qualifies by visiting the website. The One Tacoma Public Engagement Initiative is going strong and seeking more feedback from residents with two public workshop events left in June, on Thursday, June 20th, or the following week, June 27th, to share your ideas shaping several long-range planning programs. You can also visit the One Tacoma online ideas wall through the end of July at cityoftacoma.org slash one Tacoma. That wraps up this edition of Tacoma Report. A great way to find out about the services the City of Tacoma has to offer is by going to cityoftacoma.org. We leave you now at a low point along Ruston Way in Tacoma during the June 8th low tide. Lots of exposed rocks, pilings and critters. I'm Angie Foster, thanks for watching.